IRCC has a massive backlog of applicants for visitor visas, study permits, work permits. How do you overcome the fr frustration of waiting so long, not knowing what to do? Our number one recommendation is meditation. Okay, jokes aside, everyone is asking how long it'll take. Each country and application category may experience different processing times. When will your application have a decision issued by RCC? You need to come to study, work, or visit a family member, or complete an exploratory trip, or visit a conference. This is the number one question on everyone's mind. Is there a solution for all this? Well, this live stream today is fully dedicated to the IRCC processing times and backlog, which is, of course, a wonderful subject. Before we start, let's do a quick introduction. My name is Reza, and I work with the Ingwe immigration team helping applicants move to Canada. Whether it's for yourself, your kids, your business, or all of the above, we we make it happen. Let me make this clear. I'm not an actual full-time YouTuber, although Bupinder could uh, argue me on that point. But I work hands-on with our license team working on actual applications and communicating with the Canadian Immigration Department, both inside and outside Canada, on behalf of our clients who we're representing. These videos are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge and processing times with our worldwide audience. And if you're thinking about immigrating to Canada, well, we're here to help. Get a free email assessment by filling out one of the forms down below this video when it's posted for eligible applicants. And let's jump into it. IRCC is planning a huge flurry of decisions on visitor visas very soon based on an upcoming announcement. Stay tuned for this policy announcement in the coming weeks. Right now, it is focusing on visitor visas, but the internal memo of the IRCC could also address other temporary resident visas, such as work permits and study permits. The backlog of the IRCC was more than 2 million at the end of 2022, just this past year. And they want to push this number down to pre-COVID-19 figures. If you have an application for a visitor visa with the IRCC and are not from a high refusal country such as Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, and so forth, then you can expect a decision possibly within the next 30 to 40 days. Their processing would be on the first in, first out basis, hence processing all the backlog of the older applications, which means faster processing times potentially even for more recent applicants, since it will clear the path for officers to work on newer applications later on as well. The core focus of this new policy will be visitor visas, although it may affect many TRV uh, categories, such as study visas and work permits. Keep in mind that the number one applicant source countries for visitor visas to Canada is India and Nigeria. They're also in the top 10 countries of asylum seekers in Canada, which also sometimes affects IRCC officers' decision-making and approval rates for these very high-volume countries in terms of applications. Quick pause here before we continue, just checking if uh, everything is going okay. There's a little bit of a streaming issue not sure why, but uh, hopefully we'll be over that soon. Okay, today we'll be reviewing the actual processing times for various IRCC application categories, which we, we have experienced for our clients that we represent through our offers. These processing times are before any new policy, which may or may not be announced in the coming days or weeks by the IRCC. The processing times on this page, or what I'm going to be explaining to you, are based on real client applications, not the IRCC website published processing times. The processing times for each case may vary based on the overseas embassy, the nationality residency status, immediate family members inside Canada for visitor visas, 
and other factors pertinent to your specific case. Uh, and folks, the people here on YouTube, we will be uh, answering questions and comments very soon when we've gone over all the processing time. So here we go. Spousal open work permit, new applications inside Canada. We got a five and a half month processing time for our clients. Spousal open work permit, new applications outside of Canada, two months. Yeah, I know, it's weird. <laughs> Spousal open work permit extension inside Canada, six months. Why? We don't know. Study permit new applications outside of Canada. Uh, we've seen five months uh, and we've also seen uh, two to three months, three months on average, if it's not SDS, okay? Study permit new applications, we've also seen two months. As I said, we've had a case two months, we've had a case five months. So it really depends on your embassy. Study permit, permit extensions inside Canada, six days. And this is because they are using um, AI, uh, artificial intelligence in some of this process. Visitor visa extensions inside Canada, um, that means not a visitor visa extension. Technically, it's a visitor visa that they apply from inside of Canada. Uh, that would be eight months, but this number will drastic, drastically drop soon. Visitor records inside Canada are being done within one to three weeks, so it's super fast. We're just going to take a pause. Um, Before we continue, folks, visitor visa new applications from outside of Canada. It was in some countries taking nine months. In certain countries, we've seen it for one month. So it's very dependent on the embassy, your nationality, the region you're actually applying from. LMI Global Talent Stream, not the work permit, but the actual LMI application. We've done it for our employers in three weeks, like full decision issued. LMI application, low wage, not the work permit, one and a half months. LMI work permit, four months, right? That's from outside of Canada. I'm just gonna take a small break here, folks, so I don't talk too, high, too fast. Postgraduate work permit, new application inside Canada, five months, outside Canada, four months. <laughs> Go figure. Postgraduate work permit, paper extension from inside Canada. Paper extension, that's, you already have a work permit, postgraduate work permit, but your passport expired before the full length of the postgraduate work permit you were eligible for. Three months inside Canada. Spousal sponsorship PR from inside Canada, we've got five months from outside of Canada we've seen 11 to 12 months you know faster processing is possible spousal sponsorship PR work permit so that means you've sponsored your spouse or partner inside Canada and you've also applied for a work permit for them two and a half months for the work permit express entry CEC inside Canada we've seen six months during COVID we've seen even three and a half months but the latest one we've seen is six months Federal skilled worker outside Canada, six and a half months. LMI exempt, oh, intra-company transfer C12, LMI exempt work permit, new applications. Literally flag polling takes a few hours here, but if you apply from outside Canada, you could be looking up uh, four and a half months from what we've seen. Other LMI exempt work permits, flag polling could be hours or four and a half months from outside. Ontario Provincial Nomination Certificate, three and a half months, if you've got enough points, remember. Ontario Provincial Nominee PR Processing at the federal state, so it's a PNP category PR process through the federal, 11 months. That's our latest client. And, and again, it depends on the quality of the application. It states 22 months, but we got our clients in 11 months, and yeah, it's... We didn't do anything, it just, there are certain priorities for IRCC. Nova Scotia Provincial Nomination Certificate, six months, so they're not a very fast province. 
bridging open work permit or bridging work permit, whether it's closed or open, from inside Canada, it's taken six months for clients. Startup visa PR processing. So what we've seen is um, two years for the IRCC to start reviewing and, you, and within two and a half years, based on what they've also published on their website, a decision to be rendered for the PR. Startup visa work permit, uh, we've seen five months from inside of Canada, four and a half months from outside. Again, be very careful with these processing times. All this could change, and it depends on where you're applying from. High volume, high refusal, visa exempt, all these factors come into play. It is good to understand that IRCC has succumbed to external pressures to deal with this massive backlog of ter temporary resident visas, such as visitor study and work visas. We all agree that it's the worst immigration backlog in the world, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, they could literally win the worst, like they, they could literally win an award for the worst backlog and processing system in the world. With the new announcement by RCC expected very, very soon as of the making of this live stream, these processing times can change very quickly. And if you're stuck in that backlog, you could be freed up very soon from this IRCC nightmare. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, not just subscribe for the sake of subscribing, okay? We don't actually make money off YouTube channel, but to get actual updated IRCC processing times, not the published ones, but the things that are actually happening. Latest IRCC policy updates, the latest startup visa news, which you cannot find on any other channel. The truth about immigration programs and approval rates, no other channel will share with you. And immigration hacks, as well as clarifications and explanations about various Canadian immigration programs for newbies and viewers who are not familiar with the over 75 Canadian immigration programs available both federally, provincially, regionally, and rurally. What they mean, who's eligible to apply, the do's and don'ts based on our experience handling our client applications with the IRCC, both from inside and outside Canada. And if you're thinking about immigrating permanently or temporarily, well, through skilled immigration, family sponsorship, business, LMI exempt, education, or C1011 or 12 ICT, well, you're at the right place. I can guarantee only one point. You will know what to expect the entire process clearly laid out for you. And all the risks identified, including costs. Our legal agreements are based on payment milestones, which is linked directly to your application progress, progression. We do not take 100% advance payment for your Canadian immigration application. There will be no surprises in terms of ex expenses or costs, just results. We have a $1 million liability insurance which protects you and us from mistakes or fraud as well as a dedicated client trust account with our Canadian banks. Our team speaks over eight languages and we help applicants from over 47 different countries and I think it's gonna be 48 by next week. And this list is of course growing. Click the link below this video to get a free email assessment for eligible applicants and if you wanna do a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of my immigration team members, you can also book a uh, consultation session directly using the consultation link in the description of this video which will be also posted on all of our social media channels. And of course we're in our live session which means every week Thursday 11 a.m. North America Eastern Standard Time we are live on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook and on YouTube we get to see everyone's questions and comments and respond to them live so it's the best place to get your immigration questions answered for free okay we got a lot of people here uh so we're gonna i mean questions wise well, i want to make sure we're here on top of it okay bupinder is there of course bupinder great seeing you um good evening uh back in india great to see you nasreem ibrahimu also known as rosita says hello el nino june <laughs> yeah hello back to you uh rosita so pantarian says hi reza so, Pon, hello back to you. Deep beep. Okay, deep beep kind of retracted the comment. MP Nisha Pandey, hello, sir. How are you? I filed for my LMI work permit visa from Kuwait on the 3rd of November 2022. When can I surely expect my result? Well, we've seen 
four and a half months, but from the GCC region, you could be looking anywhere from four to six months uh, MP Nisha. So if it's not four and a half months, like we've seen for many of our applicants from Middle East uh, and uh, Southeast Asia as well, like India, Pakistan, um, the GCC in Kuwait, UAE is, is tricky. Sometimes they do it quickly. Sometimes it may take up to six months. Gustavo Henry says, hello, Reza. Hello back, Gustavo. Um, Abniser Abdile. Hello, Reza. Took, talk about visa visa after biometric. How long does it take, please? Abdiner, it, all the processing times I mentioned right now in this video, just before um, we started you know, answering questions, was after the biometrics, not when you apply. Because they won't process you uh, until you have your biometrics done. They, can, they technically, according to the immigration reg regulations, you will be refused if you don't do your biometrics. Okay, so the visitor visas, uh, we've seen one month, we've seen nine months, but this will change over the next month. If this new policy is being released, you will see a drastic reduction in visitor visa processing times. Uh, hold on. Sharif Karim says, hello, can you find out what the problem is with Ghanaian applicants? <laughs> Sharif, that's an interesting uh, comment question. It's, you know, the processing in the Middle East and Africa is very slow. Okay, this is what everyone knows. So there's nothing wrong with Ghana. We have a lot of clients from Ghana, and it's actually one of, you know, very good countries that we work with in Africa, English speaking, uh, very good. Uh, but IRCC generally has like the, their, their foot on the brake all the time with the number of applicants from Africa. So technically, you know, the, the application center in Ghana also processes many applicants from different parts of Africa. So it's slower, right? Uh, and sometimes you get, you know, the refusals. But the slowness is because they're really busy with, many different applications from different countries outside of Ghana. Ebenezer Yeboa, after biometrics, how long does it take to hear from RCC for students? Uh, we've, if it's not student direct stream, we've had one month, we've had five months, but uh, we've had, uh, on, on average, you could say three months, okay? And that will be uh, hopefully improving this year. Bupinder says the brother or sister of the work permit or can get an open work permit or not. The brother or sister, no, no, Bupinder, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, they, they cannot get a work permit based on siblings. So it, you really, the Canadian immigration is really horrible in terms of sibling relationships. You can only get additional points in PNP or uh, express entry if you've got siblings, but you don't get anything else. I'm sorry, it's, I know it's weird. So Pontarian says, I have my letter of acceptance. Hold on, I lost your question there. Okay, I have my letter of acceptance for May 2023. Good, next few months. I need professional help with my visa application and I find it and uh, already filed an assessment form. Ah, okay, Sopan. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at that afterwards with our office if you fill the form and make sure they, that we've got an education team that will do the full assessment and uh, we'll let you know. So I will make a note of that, no worries. Roverman, hi Reza, how about start a visa? If we start now, then how many years it will take to land in Canada? Uh, you can land with a work permit, but not land as a PR. The PR processing right now takes up to two and a half years. Uh, you would, um, you could see an improvement in applications over the next one year, maybe, right? So we are seeing 2021 under process, um, not yet, but 2020s are being processed, so they're being reviewed, and then 2021 are being uh, issued permanent file numbers now, too. So that gives you an idea if you apply today whether you will be a permanent resident by 2025, right? And again, startup visa, the processing times with IRCC, it could improve, but it'll never be one year again, okay? That, those days are over, folks. Those are the Shakespearean days, you know? Way gone. They're in the history books. Ebenezer <laughs> Yeboah, after biometrics, about five 
Uh, hold on. Uh, after about five months, I haven't heard from RCC. Is my pending Hawaii student visa? Ebenezer, yes, as I said, we've seen nine months, we've seen five months, we've seen three months, and we've seen one month processing times. But IRCC will be addressing this backlog very soon over the next month, so you can expect a decision in February, March, hopefully. Gustavo Henry, hi Reza, I'm from Mexico and I have a 26-year-old. I'm the only member of a real startup. Oh, Gustavo! A real startup. I like that. I like that. Gustavo knows what's going on in the startup world. I like it. Um, do I have to make the designated organization sign a confidentiality letter for the project I'm sending to them, or do I have to trust they won't copy the idea? <laughs> That's a good question. You can ask for one. Whether they give you one or not, I don't know. Each designated organization would be different. They are tricky, some of them larger ones especially, but you can definitely ask for one, it doesn't hurt. Uh, folks, when I'm answering your questions, please press the like button, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't know what the like button is, how it looks like, what it does, but they told me to tell you to press the like button. Um, if I don't have any experience creating innovations or operating a business, but have built a complex application with no revenue and no outside investments besides my time, okay? Okay. Can I get support letter from a designated organizer? Can I qualify for the startup visa? So let's, yeah, I mean, you ha like if you don't have education or work experience at all, then you can apply, but it'll be tricky to get approval if your startup doesn't have revenue yet, right? But if you have other work experience and you have education and you've developed based on your own work experience and your edu or education, this application and it's, wonderful then yeah of course you can be eligible based on medical inadmissibility criminality misrepresentation language ability minimum summon funds and a letter of support but yes it is possible a lot of uh, we have a lot of clients and i've seen a lot of startups where they may not have education or they may not have the relevant work exact work experience but they've got one or the other Sometimes they have neither, but you know, I don't recommend it. Gustavo Henry says, let's say I get a letter of support from a designated organization and I meet the language requirements. I now submit my application to the IRCC. The application to, is to get a PR, am I right? Yes, it's a PR application with a subsequent work optional work permit application to come inside Canada to work on your startup. Folks, we're experiencing a little bit of streaming issues, so excuse the technica te technical issues. Gustavo says, when will the startup visa change to be 100% work permit, in which will, will my wife get a work permit to? Yes, if you receive a work permit, Gustavo, your wife, spouse, can also receive an open work permit. So if you are approved for a work permit, while you wait for your PR, your family can have work permits and dependent children in high school or elementary can also receive study permits. Um, Gustavo says, if I plan to get married in the last quarter of the next year, therefore moving to Canada right after the wedding, do you recommend applying right now so I can start working from my home country? Uh, yeah, I would say start because it's a slow process. When you get uh, married, update uh, immediately the IRCC with updated application forms and details about your spouse, you know, all the requirements. And then they will later on also request an update. So, because it's a long process. So, if you wait to get married and then apply, you just, who knows what will happen. In terms of when the startup will become 100% work permit, we don't know yet. Maybe not immediately. Maybe not. We don't know. This IRCC thing is it's like full of surprises. Nobody knows. Um, Gustavo says, can I update my application after I get married? Will, do, will my wife still get an open work permit? Yes, you can. All the applications have to be updated. And you, uh, you can have a work permit and then get married and then apply for an open work permit. The key is making sure we show the relationship existed before you apply to Canada. Okay? So to make sure they don't think it's just like an immigration play. After getting the letter of support and submitting my application during those 32 months, at what point will the designated organization give me the money 
to start executing my project in Canada. So Gustavo, there's only two designated organizations, two categories of them that will fund startups, angel investors, and venture capital. They will not uh, obviously fund you. Uh, they will do a commitment certificate with you, but they won't give you any money until you are a Canadian PR and all the group members are. If you're the only one, then just you. So this means um, this means that uh, that basically you ha can't go to an incubator. They don't give you money, uh, angel investors and venture capital. And usually, you know, it can be within months after uh, you are a PR to trigger that agreement to fund you. So it could be within one month, two months, three. Really depends on the designated organization, but it wouldn't take that long. But remember, not every designated organization will fund you. You've got to have a venture capital or angel investor to do that, and uh, that will, you know, it has to be a very good startup. Gustavo says, do I have to work from my country to implement the business in Canada? At what point can I move to Canada? You can apply for a work permit and come and implement the business here, okay? You can also do it from your home country, but you always have to show the intention of moving the business and creating benefit for Canada. So you have to have a good strategy. Uh, Bupinder says, I'm keeping my questions for tomorrow. Good point, Bupinder. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, Gustavo says, if the startup visa is still 100% PR, will I need a closed work permit? Uh, will my wife get an open work permit? How long is the process for the work permit? Yes, as I mentioned, open work permit if you're approved for a closed work permit after you apply for your startup PR with uh, a valid letter of support and the other eligibility documents. Work permit processing times from Mexico uh, can be around three months, okay? Maybe three and a half months, worst case. Gustavo Henry says, can the investor finance my me and my wife's set, settling expense if the project is really good? No, you cannot finance your minimum settlement funds. Uh, they can finance or be an external investor that does not control more than 50% of the business for the business, but your minimum settlement funds is up to you, not an external investor. You cannot borrow. What serious designated organization do you recommend for this type of project in Vancouver? Ah, there's a couple in Vancouver, some good ones too, and some not so good ones. Um, you'd have to reach out. We work with... Uh, partnering firm that does all the admissions, right? They do charge a fee, but you know, uh, I don't have all the names off the top of my head right now. For sure. Last, I really love your hard work and your videos. Thank you very much. No problem, Gustavo. <laughs> yeah, a lot of questions, but good questions. I'll be honest with you. And I like the fact that you've really worked on a real startup and, um, and hopefully you can get all the eligibility together and apply. Why not? Uh, we, you know, and you're from Mexico, things will be a little bit easier than other applicants from other parts of the world. Lala J says, can I apply for a study permit with my sister as my sponsor? Yes, you could have anyone as a sponsor, but you know, keep that in mind that anyone, that, that there's a relation, right? So immediate family is the best, but sometimes people have uncles or you know, a far off cousin, but you've got to document those, so don't take don't take this lightly when I say anyone, it's, there's got to be a relationship. But with immediate family, yes, of course. And you have to show the strength of the sponsor. You know, if the sponsor has $30,000 Canadian in their name, totally in the world, <laughs> and they're sponsoring you with 25, 30, that's so-so. Her current account, six month statement, shows a lot of money in and out, but the December balance is not much. Will it be okay if I submit her savings to customer as well? Yeah, as long as it covers your expenses, which means tuition, living expenses first year, and potentially next year, or her income can potentially cover future expenses. That's the basic minimum requirement. But like every good lawyer and immigration consultant says, the minimum is never enough for IRCC for high volume and high refusal regions, okay? If you're not from the US, Europe, Mexico, Chile, or you know, Colombia, or other places, okay, or Korea or Japan, you, need, you cannot show minimum financial, uh, financials okay, for like a study permit. Barbara Nidia Saba, mm, 
Daisaba. Daisaba. Is that did I did I pronounce that right, Barbara? Daisaba. Daisaba. I like that. Hi. I applied under the group of five private sponsorship. Yeah, group of five. It's going to be over one year. I haven't received medical regrets. How long does the process take? To be honest with you, Barbara, um, I don't specialize in asylum and refugees. And if you notice, we don't po post anything about asylum and refugees and, and even the five private sponsorship uh, program, which is a great program, by the way. But it's, I've talked to people where it's taken very, very long. During COVID, there's people who were waiting for three years, but I believe they should hopefully process it faster, but definitely not one year. You need to be a little bit more patient, but again, not expertise. Lala Jesh, how long is the processing time for study permits lately? Uh, as I said in, in the, in, earlier in this live, we've seen one month, we've seen uh, nine months, and right now it's, uh, you can say on average, you know, up to three months and hopefully these things will process faster because they're, they're going to improve the backlog. They're going to work on the backlog. Uh, and, that's the, and that announcement will come soon. So on average, you can put three months. Uh, if it's SDS, it'll be faster. It can be two months. Okay? Uh, Haitam Musa, if we disclose that our venture will create two jobs in, your, um, in year three, is it enough to convince IRCC? Um, no, Haitam, because... IRCC, well, first you need to convince the designated organization to give you a lot of support, right? So, um, so that's the first one. Then the IRCC, they see all these fancy numbers and business plans, okay? But if they don't see anything tangible from your startup, it doesn't matter if you put two in year three or five or 50, they will refuse you, okay? Um, so it's not about putting a number for year three in your business plan. It's actually doing the work, showing the traction. Maybe you've got um, early uh, sort of uh, trial clients. Uh, you're creating revenue. That's more important than just saying, I'm going to hire two, job, two Canadians in year three. Um, usually you like to beef up the business plans. That's what we do with our business plans for any immigration category. Uh, economic category for Canadian immigration. You don't go bare minimum. You boast about it. It's like a resume. You know, somebody who was like the driver to the president in some country, on the resume they'll write, I was working in the president's office as a close advisor. <laughs> That's how you create business plans. I don't, okay? <laughs> Uh, just FYI, uh, GU Canada, can I take a super visa, live in Canada? Mm, you can take a super visa if you're a parent, grandparent of an eligible Canadian PR or citizen. Or you can reside in Canada, Canada temporarily if you meet the eligibility criteria up to five years, right? Uh, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> live temporarily maybe, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chandra Sharma, what is the best stream for PR for a person who is on a closed work permit, NOXI, West postgraduate, ILCLB7? Chandra, you forgot which province you're in or slash city. Let me know and we'll brainstorm something. Jiu says, can I get a supervisor without leaving Canada? Uh, Supervisors are processed from outside of Canada, but you can also flagpole. You could apply and flag for a go and come back. So that there are some options available. Uh, keep in mind, each application is different. The details for each applicant are very different. Um, what I'm stating today is general information about IRCC policies and immigration programs. Hence, um, you need to make sure that everything is applicable to your own file because everyone's is different, right? Um, Utkarsh Nigam. I got my passport picked up request two days ago. Nice, Utkarsh. That is excellent. Uh, finally, IRCC hopefully is going to give some good news and just news to many people this year. Uh, House of Most Moss Design. Hello, Rosa. After submitting biometrics and medical, how long does it take IRCC to take a decision on PR application? 
Um, how long is it after submit by my medical? How long is it until the, Yeah, well, it depends on which program and where you're applying from, how it's the most designed. Please let me know. Chandra says, working on Ontario for the last nine months. Uh, I would recommend only one program, Chandra, to you, and that's the Ontario PMP in the mainstream, if your occupation is on there. Because if you're NOC C, which, you know, you don't use NOC C anymore, it's all tier level, so tier 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, if it's not eligible for express entry, right, you own, and you're not in the Atlantic, and in the provincial nominee program, you only have um, um, certain occupations that would accept uh, the tier level three or four, uh, you need to look at the PNP and you need to check your occupation there to see, because nine months is the perfect time to be eligible to be sponsored by an employer. So you don't have a lot of options, um, unfortunately, but you do have options. So that's also good news, right? Um, so, Jiu says, thank you so much, EBU. <laughs> uh, God bless you. Bupinder Nanda says, thanks a lot for your guidance. Bupinder, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Chandra Sharma, retracted. Yeah. Uh, Bupinder, see you tomorrow. Yes, House of Moss Design says, home care ch uh, pilot. Yeah, I figured. House of Moss Design. I've seen you online before. Kind of remembered, I guess, but I want to verify. It's taking a very long time right now, but this year everything will be faster as per the promise of the IRCC. Okay, so you've, sa you've said you've done your biometrics and medicals, but again, I would say this year you're gonna see it, whether it's next month or in eight months with a caregiver pilot, literally nobody has a clue. I'm sorry. Utkar says, I'm going to the summer intake as a student. Can I start working? Because I thought you have to first study in the mandatory terms. Um, no, no, there's no mandatory terms. It has to be an academic program that you're starting. It doesn't matter when you start it. Academic, not language or pathway. So you can start, yes. Uh, it's not like, oh, you can't work in the summer, but you can work in the winter. No, that, that rule doesn't exist. Uh, so folks, press the like button if you see it on your screen, and if you don't, that's okay. Uh, we are here today on a live, uh, and we spoke about the processing times. They do use a lot of artificial intelligence for applications from inside Canada, such as study permits, visitor record renewals. Uh, all these things will be uh, processed faster, plus a huge shift with IRCC policy coming up, being announced in the next few weeks, potentially, by the end of January, maybe, where they will address the uh, backlog with RCC and remove certain conditions and eligibility and push a lot of decisions and a lot of applicants. Again, they did not address high refusal regions, so if you're from a high refusal region, it may not work. Um, full-time center to work off of. Yeah, so you do need to be full-time, uh, Utkarsh, so I'm not sure because a lot of people also study full-time. It doesn't mean that your term in the summer is going to be part-time. So what I'm talking about, you cannot be part-time in any semester except the last semester uh, if you are missing some credits. So no matter what semester it's on, you always have to be full-time. Otherwise, it's not about working. It's about losing status and visiting an international student. Okay? Be careful, everyone. We'll be back here next Thursday. Okay? Next Thursday, live, 11 a.m., answering all of your questions. Thank you. See everyone, anyone who's booked a consultation. We'll see you soon as well. Thanks for joining us. Take care and all the best, everyone, with your immigration to Canada. Hopefully, we'll see improvement this year. Take care, folks. Bye-bye now.